Oh, you thought you were going to switch into low kicks? That's a hard no. It's got a decent 102 attack, along with 92 speed, but the true damage is done with first impression. This is a priority stab bug move with 90 power that you can only use on the first turn that low kicks is in. Its ability Tinted Lens allows it to deal double damage to not very effective targets, effectively giving it no resists. We throw in Terra Bug to boost this along with like a Choice Band or Silver Powder and almost nothing wants to live it. It can also use stab coverage in things like Knock Off or Sucker Punch if it's slower, and Low Kicks is the goat at leaving no survivors. Look, Low Kicks might just be one of the scariest bug types right now, and this, a first impression from this thing is absolutely nothing to play with. It does way more than you'd ever expect, and this thing is just insane to use. If you're into this kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, I'd love to have you as part of the journey, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent decides to lead off with the Tinkaton. This thing just comes out here slinging hammer, and I'm not really that afraid of it as I have a slug. So. I know that I'm defensive, this thing can't really touch me, but if it's a lead tink, it's probably here to just kind of set up some stealth rock, and of course that's what we're going to do as well. The fun and frightening thing about Tinkaton is that it can be ran a couple different ways. As this one goes for the stealth rock, it's going to be more of kind of just a support lead one. It could potentially be swords dance, it could be screens, it has got a couple different options. But we just go ahead and trade stealth rock there at this point. I realize I don't really have a reason to switch here. I have the coverage with the Earth Power, I also know that I don't really take much damage from this. But they actually just end up going for the Encore. They like how I set up the Stealth Rock so much that they make me do it again. And of course that basically is going to force me out of here with the Gastrodon. So, obviously the best thing this thing can do is go for a Gigaton Hammer. And I have one little Lego fella who doesn't really care about that. And we're here for a couple different reasons. First of all, to be just a little guy. And that's the one thing we actually do best, but also I want to get up that Electric Terrain. It's gonna stop things being from put to sleep, it's gonna boost some electric damage from things like my Magnazone, but also I'm here to set up some spikes. I wanna to try to prioritize getting up as many hazards as possible, because it looks like they don't have the greatest hazard control. So, they actually end up going for the knockoff there, it does get rid of my terrain extender, but we've already got the terrain up anyway. And at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay down some spikes. Now, they do actually go for that Gigaton Hammer, and it's not gonna do much. It also probably hurts the hammer there a little bit. I am extra spiky like stepping on Legos in the middle of the damn night in the hallway, and it's pretty fun. So I just decided to lay down a second layer of spikes because that continuous damage to punish switches is gonna be pretty valuable in also putting things in range from things like uh, my low kicks to just knock stuff out with first impression even easier. So they now decide to bring in the Iron Boulder who is in fact very scary. First of all, because it actually gets a free Quark Drive because of my electric terrain, which is kind of just annoying for me. Um, but also, I probably just die to this thing, and I also don't have the, the greatest amount of switch ins to this. So, I just decide, I'm like, you know what, I've got two layers of spikes, I've got my terrain up, this is kind of fine, I'm gonna go for a memento, and just go ahead and off myself. But it turns out they're actually gonna go for the Swords Dance there, so luckily, I'm kinda able to negate the boost there a bit and at least make this thing a little less of a threat. It's very fast, it's very it has a booster energy speed, or at least it has a quark drive speed, and uh, this thing is frightening. So, one thing we do know for certain is that low kicks is not afraid of shit. I can go into the low kicks here mostly just because I have the super effective first impression. Most of the time you don't even need the super effective hit on this fellow. It, it, it just does so much damage. However, I can essentially force this thing out, and that's why Low Kicks is so great at stopping potential setups. It doesn't matter how fast they are, with that first impression we can just guarantee, you know, huge damage here. So, they're actually going to switch back into the Tinkaton, which is just my best play to go for that first impression, just to cover for if they stay in. But also, it has to come in, it takes that Spikes damage along with the Stealth Rock, and the first impression is still going to do a nice little chunk there, even with the resisted hit. So the good thing about having low kicks, you know, with the silver powder item, is that it kind of bluffs the choice band, and while they can see the damage, I just realize I'm, it's in my best interest just to go for a nice little U-turn here, gets another chunk, and while it's not doing a whole lot to this thing, what it does is it puts it in range to where the next times it switches in, it can no longer be a check to the low kicks. So, main thing I want to prioritize is keeping good health on low kicks, as I'm not heavy duty boots. I obviously have to come in and take the Stealth Rock chip every time, which does do a significant amount. Um, but just getting rid of all their answers to low kicks is kind of one thing I'm trying to prioritize. So they go for the knockoff as I switch into the Gastrodon. Now, funny thing about this Gastrodon, I am actually um, sticky hold with the Rocky Helmet. So 
Funny part is the Sticky Hold doesn't work when this thing has Mold Breaker. So it's like the first match I've had with Sticky Hold trying to just switch into knockoffs. Um, and it just doesn't work because of the damn Mold Breaker. So I can at least, however, go for that Earth Power. They decide to just stay in here and go for a Gigaton Hammer just to get as much value as they can out of the Tinkaton as it's not really going to be switching into easily to stuff. And uh, that's going to take care of the Tinkaton, which is good to see gone. So, bad thing is they now have the ability to switch into whatever they like, and they decide to bring in this girl. And they're actually going to end up going for the victory dance with the old clogs over there. Going to be dancing up a storm on the freaking lemonade on the ground. And that's going to give them a nice little attack, defense, and speed boost, which makes this thing quite scary. Luckily, however, I knew they were probably going to set up. And that allows me to go for an Ice Beam. The, the ice coverage on this Gastrodon is super nice for just dragons in general, but also things that want to set up in your face that are Grasp Fellas. So, I get some really good chip there, and then I realize I don't have much that wants to switch into this. So, I just decided to let Gastrodon go down here. Um, I just realized it was probably just going to be nice for me to get a nice little revenge switch. So, as that does taste, take care of the Gastrodon, I can at least now switch into the number one stopper to shit like this, which is, of course gonna be the low kick so I bring in young Jiminy Cricket and of course that first impression again once again does not care about your speed boost and we're just out here trying to make a good first impression so I just go ahead and stand on my crazy saw legs and that takes care of it so that's a big setup sweeper out of the way that thing could have been a massive problem but what's also a damn massive even bigger problem is freaking raging bolt so the good thing is it comes in it takes considerable damage you know from those hazards and obviously, Low Kicks looks super nice for me in this late game. So I do want to switch this thing out. And I do have one dude with an Assault Vest who's kind of best, my best answer to handle this thing. As I know it's probably going to go for something like a Draco Meteor. I decided to bring in the Pheasant Dippity. So I'm super specially defensive. Turns out they're actually going to end up going for the Volt Switch. Does do a nice little chunk of damage. I'm thinking, is that Specs? I can't actually be sure. But what I do know is that thing has to come back in. And it's going to be at like 50% health the next time it comes in. So... The pivot allows them to go into a different, I guess this one's a, a future Paradox fella, who does come in and gets that Quark Drive to activate. It actually is going to be booster energy the first time it didn't need to use it because of that electric terrain. But this time it does actually end up using that booster energy and it is going to give it that speed boost. So, at this point, problem, I don't have anything to switch into this. Earthquake is not great for my squad. So I just decide I'm going to let the, you know, the Fez go down, which does kind of suck. But once again, it was kind of just a matter of like who wants to die there. And it just felt like that thing had, you know, the least value. Because I can just go right back into the cricket, whatever the hell this thing is. And first impression, once again, is just going to either force a switch into huge hazards. Or just kill this thing with a first impression. I'm going to go ahead and predict the switch, however. Because they do have the Serilege in the back. who looks pretty nice, like a pretty nice option to switch into a first impression. So, as this thing does come in, gets absolutely obliterated by some Legos. And also, I am going to be able to bop it with a knockoff. I tell his ass to knock it off, and that is going to take care of the Serilad. So, Prediction comes in clutch there. Stab knockoff takes care of it, which is amazing. And uh, no life orb for you, buddy. That shit is laying on the ground. So, as they are running out of options, they can now decide at least to switch into whatever they want. And it's going to end up being the Raging Bolt. So, here's actually a very interesting situation with this long neck guy. Is that, I know that they probably want to go for something like the Thunderclap here. Bought me with some priority and just finished me off. So I decided to go for the Sucker Punch. And while that doesn't end up killing it, they do click the Thunderclap, which now fails because I've already used my attack, which is a great way of getting around, you know, their electric type Sucker Punch. And now all I have to do is bop them with one more and that takes care of a Raging Bolt in like the most satisfying way. So we're just using the entire move set out here. And here's the situation. It's going to come down to a very close game. As they have two Mons left, they have the Basque Legion and they have the Iron Boulder over there. So, as Basque Legion comes in, I'm looking at this thing. After that Hazard's damage, a Sucker Punch should actually kill here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And we are having a nice little fish fry tonight. That's going to take care of it. And Low Kicks is going on a tear never seen before. But here's where it gets super interesting. So, they go into the Iron Boulder, and this thing is obviously faster than me, and it just easily takes care of a Low Kicks. But they also know that I have the Sucker Punch option. I'm just going to go for it, because it's like it forces them to go for you know, that Swords Dance, and it's going to come down to, like, they're going to have to attack me eventually. And I'm like, well, I mean, I can just sit here and Sucker Punch all day long. Except for the fact that there is one way of getting around this to ensure that they don't PP stall or any nonsense. And that is that I know that I take 36 damage from the Stealth Rock. So what I can actually do is end up switching into the Gengar here as essentially a sack. 
knowing that I can bring back in the low kicks and there's nothing they can do to stop a first impression, which is insane. So I go into the Gengar here and uh, as they expect, maybe I go for a Sucker Punch, they're just gonna go for another Sword Stance. I figure that's probably their plan is just going for Sword Stances all day long until I either run out of Sucker Punches and I just am screwed or something like that. So they do outspeed me because this thing is fast as hell and just aerodynamic. So you know, that does take care of the Gengar, but that's exactly what we wanted to happen because knowing exactly how much I take from Stealth Rock is extremely valuable in that knowing I can come in here and live. Gemini comes in back one more time and I get knocked down to two HP. And at this point, all I need to do is get off that first impression, which they cannot stop because we are quick as hell. And they're gonna go ahead and just save this thing's life. So low kicks comes in more clutch than ever in that match. And that's why this thing is the goat. So with that, first of all, super fun match. Second of all, if you are enjoying the video and you stuck around this long, you should consider hitting that subscribe button. It only takes you a second and it just helps out the channel. So definitely click that. But also let's see if we can get the low kicks to go crazy once more. All right, so this time my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the buff kitty cat. They lead in Cinnaroar, which is kind of fine. I just have the, uh, I, just ha I just have a snail or a slug or whatever the hell Gastrodon is. I'm just here to be able to take hits all damn day long. So this is a great matchup for me. I just decided to go for that Stealth Rock as they're actually going to fake out, which I'm totally fine with because it does no damage. And then also they touch my Rocky Helmet and uh, we, we're out here pointy. So that does a nice little bit of chip there, which is great. And at this point, they decide to go for the knockoff, which is also great because it gets hurt by my Rocky Helmet once again. But <laughs> we are hanging on to that Rocky Helmet like with our damn life. So it actually cannot get rid of that. You know, with the knockoff, which is great because it's like the idea behind this Gastrodon is that using Sticky Hold, most people are just reluctant to use water moves anyway. Like it still puts pressure on the opponent and then, you know, not wanting to activate like a Storm Drain. So Sticky Hold catches knockoffs off guard and yeah, it's pretty solid. So at this point, they just decide to go for the parting shot because that kitty has been outplayed by the slug and they decide to bring in the Garchomp. So the Chomp comes in, takes pretty much nothing from the Stealth Rock. However, I do at least get off a nice little surf for basically nothing, but it still feels pretty nice. And luckily, I also have the coverage with the Ice Beam because I feel like I'm kind of fodder to be set up against, and that's exactly what happens. They want to go for that Swords Dance because Garchomp can be, in fact, pretty damn scary and with that attack doubled, except I'm able to hit him with an Ice Beam and it doesn't quite kill, which does kind of suck because I really don't have anything that wants to come in on this Earthquake. So I just decided to let Gastrodon either take an Earthquake or go down here with that boost, definitely going to be able to take care of me. However, we did get the most meaningful chip on the fella just with that Ice Beam and that now I can go right into low kicks and I, uh, I can just get that priority damage off and first impression once again is going to be super nice here. So, bad news is this thing does obviously have that rough skin. So as I get that first impression off, it's not going to be Rocky Helmet luckily. So, yeah, I take a little bit of chip from that rough skin, but that's fine. We were at least able to neutralize the Garchomp. And we will not be chomped by that guy today. And now they're able to bring back an Incineroar. Notably, it does take Stealth Rock Chip, meaning it's not heavy duty boots. And then it actually just eats a Citrus Berry. So it reveals that item there, which is fine. It does get considerably a decent amount of health back. And also the Intimidate is definitely one of the things that's gonna stop the Low Kicks here. While Low Kicks does look really good against their team, Incineroar Switch-Ins is something that really is gonna punish me. So I just decide I don't really wanna take any unnecessary like fake out chip. They don't have Stealth Rock up on my side, which is great for my low kicks in the long term. So I just decide to switch into the Pin Kirchen. And uh, we're just a pointy little fella once again, who actually just ends up taking a parting shot. So they're gonna try to grab some momentum in being able to switch into whatever they like. But the good thing is they don't have like the greatest of answers in switching into this. I mean, this Pin Kirchen is really, it doesn't care about dying anyway. I just kind of want to set down like a layer of spikes and then like momentum myself anyway. So. As they actually get the, you know, the priority switch, they're able to go into the Great Tusk. And I figured this thing is surely just going to go for a rapid spin. But instead, they actually just earthquake right away. And I really wanted to try to get a Scald off on this. Because I, I very much need Chip on this Great Tusk. And you'll see why. is because I don't have really anything to switch into this. Low Kicks is no help. And this Gengar is not really either because I'm a physical Gengar. I do, however, at least have Ice Punch. So I can outspeed, I know that I can get an ice punch off and then just die. So I punch him with my tongue and we actually get a critical hit. It's going to bring it down below half, which is solid because, I, again, I just really need at least any type of chip on this thing. It's going to take a lot of assets for me to be able to get rid of this. And as the earthquake comes through, down goes the Gengar. So now I have a big decision to make on kind of how I want to deal with this. 
and everything I have just doesn't deal with it well, other than the Magnezone. You're thinking to yourself, this electric type surely can't be the greatest answer to this, but I do actually have the Terra Flying. So I know that they're gonna wanna try to go for an earthquake here, so I'm gonna bust out the Terra Flying and call it my birthday bitch because the balloons are gonna be coming out here. Now it turns out they actually end up switching into Charizard, so as the Zard comes in, it does take that 50% from the Stealth Rock, which is great. And also, as I go for the Terra, it still ends up being in my favor, just because then I know that I don't die to a flamethrower, and then now Magnezone has the upper hand versus the Zard. So, I go into that flying type, and this Magnezone is quite the interesting one. Here's the idea. I have a Blunder Policy item, which doubles your speed if you miss, and we're gonna pair that with a good old-fashioned Zap Cannon that has 50% accuracy. So, the Flash Cannon doesn't do much. I know that now I have to take a Flamethrower, which is fine. I go for it, it's gonna do over half to me, which is great. And as I go for the Zap Cannon, I was really hoping for a miss there. A miss? would have been extremely nice because then immediately my speed is doubled then I just kill that thing with a thunderbolt and then honestly Magnezone sweeps their entire team. Problem is when you have a blunder policy on the thing and you're fishing for a miss it's just it's gonna hit every time for some dumbass reasons. <laughs> that kinda sucks that allows them to then go into the Greninja who finishes me off with an ice beam because it's obviously faster without my blunder policy and down goes the Magnezone but don't worry this little fella is gonna have his day so I'm now down to two Pokemon left, and as I have the low kicks as an easy switch in here, I know that a first impression kills this even though it's ice type. It doesn't uh, have the super effective hit, but a first impres impression is very clutch. They still have four Mons left. One of them being the best switch in here is going to be Incineroar with that Intimidate, and it does at least still have to take Stealth Rock. So I'm fully expecting the Incineroar to come in. Turns out they're actually going to end up going into the Great Tusk. So here's where we see the true power of a first impression here just straight up takes out the guy without, I mean, through the resist. We take some Rocky Helmet Chip, which doesn't matter, but Great Tusk being gone opens up the game a lot for me. So that is fantastic, and now they're down to three. I've got two in the back, or I have one in the back with the Pheasant So now they go back into Greninja. This thing does put pressure on me, obviously being faster without the ability for me to go for a first impression. I then have to switch out. So I, at least Pheasant is a decent switch into this, just because once again, I'm specially defensive, I'm assault vested, I know that I can take two hits from this thing pretty much no matter what, and all I really need to do is try to get low kicks back in, but what's going to come down to it is basically if I still have a first impression in the chamber versus something fast like this Greninja. So, they're actually going to end up going for the Terra Water, and this late game gets crazy. So the Terra Water is going to boost up the Surf just a bit, and that's why I'm quite thankful that uh, I'm Assault Vest, because I still don't take a huge amount of damage from that. And now I'm in a spot where I can go for a free poison jab and try to toxic chain some stuff or just get a poison, just try to raw dog a poison. So I'm gonna go jabbing as they are gonna end up switching out here. And we do get to end up seeing the Decidueye, which is gonna come in here for the first time, take some stealth rock. And basically at this point, I know that I can still take one hit from this thing. So low kicks has become my win condition for sure as I know that uh, I, I essentially need that to win the game. So they're going to actually end up going for the Shadow Sneak, and I also have Physical Defensive Investment because this Pheasantipity does not enjoy dying, which is great, because that allows me to then go for the Dual Wing Beat. I go for that just because it gives me two different shots to try to get uh, the Toxic Chain to activate, and it does not, which kind of sucks. However, they know that a, another Shadow Sneak actually doesn't kill, and that's fantastic for me because I am faster, allowing me to then go for that U-turn which not only takes care of the Decidueye, but now allows me the free switch into the low kicks, which is awesome. And also, I have the ability to then, you know, either kill something with a first impression like the Greninja, or in the case that they go into this fella, who is at about half, I can just bring back in Pheasantipity. So, they get that Intimidate, which is the one thing that's going to stop me from grabbing a kill here. So all I really need to do is go into the Pheasantipity here. I, I basically... I bring this thing in to have the ability to bring back in low kicks not intimidated and first impressions gonna kill something. So Fez comes back in, they actually go for that fake out which is fine and then as I'm looking at this, Fezidipity is naturally faster so I can actually outspeed here with a poison jab which is amazing. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage mind you but it does actually end up getting the poison and then I'm like dude if I can just have this Incineroar dead I can win the game with the low kick. So they actually end up busting out the flare blitz and that is extremely ideal because that means they have to take just the smallest amount of recoil which then is going to put it in range to where the poison actually ends up grabbing the kill just barely which is actually kind of insane so now we've got ourselves 
in a 1v1 situation in this match is extremely close. I do at least still have the first impression in the chamber, and even though Greninja has Terrid out of that dark typing, it's not going to be super effective, but it's literally it just does so much damage to everything that I'm quite confident that uh, I can knock this thing out. I go for that first impression, and that does take care of the Greninja and effectively is going to win us the game. And that has truly showed the value of low kick. This thing is literally insane. It's one of my least favorite mons to play against. And that should be saying something. It's so, so strong. So that's going to do it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Had a lot of fun with this one. Low kick's got to be one of my favorite bug types. And honestly, just favorite Gen 9 mons in general. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.